Hey everybody, welcome to Ask Dr. Testosterone, starring Dr. George Tuliatos, brought to you by his books. The first one, Bodybuilding, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, a very good basic primer on PED use in the sport of bodybuilding. Definitely need to check that out before you get into all that. Then, last year he wrote the sequel, Training, Nutrition, Supplementation, and Bodybuilding. Put all those together, you'll have one hell of a physique. And while you're on Amazon.com, why not pick up a copy of Real Bodybuilding, Muscle Truth in 25 Years in Trenches. From Athens, Greece, where I assume it's not snowing right now, Dr. George Suliados. How are you, doctor? Hi, Ron. Is it snowing by now over there? Uh, we got about 10 inches, so close to a foot in my town yesterday. Did you How tell me it's it snowed in Greece last week, too? Uh... Uh, yeah, I think uh, as we were talking with Steve, uh, it kind of snowed a little bit. It was cold for me. I mean, referred to to Greek uh, temperature was about thirty five. You know, it's cold for that for Greece. Yeah, it is cold. And it snowed for a little bit. Yeah, but actually, four weeks ago, a month ago, it snowed, but not a lot this year. Not a lot. Oh, okay. I mean, I honestly, I never thought it snowed in Greece. I thought you guys had Mediterranean <laughs> cool. It even snowed in, in in Las Vegas, huh? Yeah, I saw that. So anybody anybody who thinks the climate isn't changing and all that, I don't know, dude. The evidence is piling up. So uh, I want to congratulate you. Last week, the 100th episode, big milestone, and you got an interview with a guy I've never been able to get an interview with. And I've asked him probably 20 times, Steve Blackman, owner yeah. of the company Advanced Research Media. And I asked, he, he said, you know, I did it because it was George. And, you know, I feel he's very grateful to you for doing 100 shows. And it's mm. a big, it's a big deal. So that's why he did it. But man, so. it, was, it was cool because I've yeah, never been able to hear him on. I interview. heard things from Steve that I never knew about the muscular development, the, the natural uh, edition, you know, yeah. and uh, um, that he likes the mass monsters, the freak shows. You know, he supports this, yeah. and uh, of course, he's a big influencer for everybody. Yeah, I mean, he's like people don't understand. He's not just a businessman. He's not all about that. He is a real fan of the sport. He really keeps track of all the the top pros, the up and coming pros, even top amateurs. You know, he's always looking for anything that can be great new content for the magazine. Yeah, the website. he's part of the industry, and actually, along with Joe Weider and, and Robert Kennedy, they were the three main publishers. Yeah, yeah. you know, and he's the only the last Castanel, and also he was uh, he owned perhaps the most quality supplement brand ever, Twin Lab. Yeah, I mean, anyone who's over the age of 40, you probably used Twin Lab supplements. Yeah. Uh, I remember buying, remember Ultra Fuel that came in glass bottles? Everything, yes. Uh, Everything. I love those things. I used to, I, I felt like I couldn't even work out unless I was drinking one of those. That's how, how crazy I was back then. But man, they had great, pro Ripped Fuel was the first really effective fat burner that we ever saw and still. And there was a, a Ripped Fuel Extreme in 2001. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, to this day, people look back and say, man, I'm, I miss Ripped Fuel. That stuff was great. Back then, it costed 80, 80 euros, so perhaps $90, you know, the wow. bottle. Wow. <laughs> wow. 20 years ago. So I'm just curious. There are countries in Greece that produce supplements like protein powders and pre-workouts. No, perhaps there was a production of a protein, of a whey powder, you know, but very short of... Um, in shortage because uh, we don't have so, so many cows that we can produce, you know, mm, uh, um, a good uh, amount of stuff. And I heard that the main the main uh, material comes from New Zealand. Oh, New okay. Zealand is the number one in production of milk, you know, and they take it from there and then they make the the whey and the casein, you know. Yeah, but Twin Lab was a big deal in Europe at the time too, right? Yeah, and uh, of course, and uh, it was made in. Uh, New York, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, well, good job getting him. I don't know how we could top that. So I guess we don't have to worry about it for another 100 episodes, right, when we get to 200. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, real briefly, also wanted to say, uh, even though Dave... Charles, you know, I was yeah. interviewed by Charles also. Charles oh, that's Thomas. right. That's right. He you came, were on that show? Before, actually, but it came out the day after uh, with Steve, you know, on yeah. Wednesday. And we talk about the, the Olympia, of course, and I told him my predictions. It was almost to the point that I just one and two, it was reversed. So I had Brandon one and uh, and uh, Rami two, and there was the opposite, you know. But I had in first place uh, Heath third because uh -huh. I had a hunch he couldn't reverse his bubble yet, you know. So mm, Yeah. Huh? 
So you were right on. So you had you had Hadi in fourth and Bonac in fifth, just like, yes. that, like that. Wow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Very accurate. <laughs> Man, should, I could bet, you know. You could be a gambler, yeah. Next time yeah. we're in Vegas for the Olympia, you should head down to like a roulette wheel or a slot table or something. Slot table, a slot machine. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's get into some questions because when we do the interview shows, we don't answer questions. So luckily we have a pretty light week. We didn't get 20 questions and we didn't get any that were this long. But yeah. uh, we, got some, we got some good ones. Uh, here's a good one. What sort of cycle... Can a bodybuilder do if he's really sensitive to gyno and aromatization? A lean bodybuilder, not a fat guy, who's training since 22 years old, no crap food, no junk, 230 pounds lean at the moment at 10% body fat. So sensitive to gyno and aromatization, what would you recommend? All the DHT derivatives and the synthetic forms of DHT. Uh, so um, Winstrel, Anavar, Primobolin, and also Master and Proviron. Okay. okay, so uh, no testosterone, of course. Okay. Ah, he can also use halotestin, which is mm. liver toxic, but it's not aromatizing, you know. Yeah, you know this, this is, is on... a dry cycle. You know, it's purely pre-contest. You know, I, I I didn't make this isn't a question, but I I saw a video that really it got me so upset. It was a 14 year old boy who's on Trembolone because some guy at the gym sold it to him. And he's a skinny little kid. He's a child, 14 years old. You're a child. I had such a case uh, on Friday, you know, a 20-year-old boy. He was just lifting weights for two years, and he tried trembling, you know. Oh, my God. 20s, 20s, bad, but this is 14. And he, and he could like... barely eat. He, he could barely uh, train properly, you know. Yeah. You know, it, it's sad. Trend, it's, it's taken on this status among the young people where it's like they think it's magical. Like everyone asks, I've had people ask me not about steroid. They specifically come up and say, do you know where I can get trend? Trend, trend, trend. They're crazy for trend. They're asking for magical device, super, super fancy uh, exercises, super uh, astronomic diets, you know, and they don't know the fucking basic stuff. It's like you want to drive a Ferrari <laughs> without having the, uh, your diploma, you know? Yeah, uh, I, I get it because when I was, when I just turned 18, I just learned about bodybuilding. I got a flex, a flex magazine came in the mail. I went to the bookstore and I saw two books, the Nautilus bodybuilding book and the Nautilus advanced bodybuilding book. And I said, well, I want to get there quick. I'm going to get the advanced book. So I started off on like their advanced routines with all the drop sets and supersets and all that crazy stuff. But yeah, I understand what it's like to be young, but 14 years old. Oh, I'm so... I want to see the guy who sold it to him. I'd like to talk to that guy. You know, what a jerk. Well, you have to talk to his parents, actually. <laughs> his parents obviously have no idea what's going on. But the kids, mm. on, he was on, he took down the video where he was talking about being on trend. And now he's just got a couple workout videos. He's very Now, thin. listen, Ron, you need a really good reason to start so young. I mean, are you a super talent? Are you, uh, are you draft to, to, you know, to NFL? So what the fuck are you using these? Just to be a bitch boy or a... A hot lover, you know? <laughs> yeah. Even if you're super talented, 14, no 14-year-old in this world should be using steroids. You need None. to do it after your puberty, your hormones to be released, you know, get your full height because you're going to short off your, your posture, your stature, you know? Yeah. And uh, it's not a good idea. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder if I should have started lifting later. Maybe I'd be a little taller. Who knows? Because I have a younger brother who used to be almost 6'2 before we all started shrinking. Anyway, next question, doctor. Best dosage of DECA for women, how long should it be used? Just for muscular and bone health, not performance enhancement. Come on, for bone uh, health? Bone health, well, they don't. Well, have... This is uh, going for the elderly, you know. You don't have osteoporosis when you're young. You have the estrogens. Hopefully. Uh, so I would say only for bulking, for bulking purposes, for four weeks, perhaps, 50 milligrams per week of DECA. They will not turn androgenic side effects. Well, I'm, I'm talking about bulking off-season bodybuilding, yeah. not for uh, bone mineral density. You don't have a problem as long as you have menstrual cycle. Well, I, Just I, take I, vitamin D and calcium. Yeah, I'm saying because I know that that is a concern for women because they do leach calcium out of their bones from yeah, but menstruation. It's after, after the 40s, after they, they stop the menstrual cycle, and in the absence of estrogens, then you have fragility in your bones. Mm, so just pop a bunch and, of and calcium. She, she has to lift weights. Because this also strengthens the bones and the muscles. Yeah. Take calcium, take vitamin D, the levels in vitamin D to be high. Uh, see some uh, suntan, you know, in order to synthesize some vitamin D. 
That's all, man. Okay, good enough. Now, next one is, how can I lower hematocrit with low sarton? I don't even know what that is. How much to use? What dose and for how long? Are there any side effects? What is well, low sarton? is a medication uh, against, high, uh, against hypertension, you know, mm -hmm. to low blood pressure. And I'm taking low sarton now almost a year at oh. 50 milligrams a day. Yes, and it's quite promising to, to control hematocrit, okay? Uh, so you can try this, and actually, it can it, it can reverse your LVH and remodel your heart wow. in case you have LVH out of steroid use and high intensity uh, over the years of lifting. You know, hmm. so by lowering your blood pressure, then the LVH might reverse in the long term. Wow! So it can, if your left ventricle has grown, this drug has thickened, can help. It. Yes. Wow. This uh, the, the thickened LVH will elevate your blood pressure. So by lowering the blood pressure, you may control and kind of remodel along with cardio your LVH. Wow. So can the wall get a little bit thinner again? Yeah. Let's say from 13 uh, millimeters to go to 12. This is a Still, major improvement, you know? Yeah. I didn't think it was possible to go back at all. Oh, it so is. It is. And even cardiomegaly is possible by, by severe fasting. Hmm. Wow. Well, we, nobody is going to do that. <laughs> Okay, good one. Next is, I have been on TRT for two years. My levels are in the 500 to 900 nanograms per deciliter range, and blood tests are all in the normal range. Overall, I feel okay. However, I have noticed that I have more and more tendinitis that isn't going away with physio treatment. Before TRT, I just had a bit in my left bicep. Now, both knees, hamstrings, Achilles, chest, and the current new one, my left hip, which is impacting my sleep. Could TRT be related to this? Any advice? I'm considering no, stopping my TRT to see if it I improves. I don't think so, no. Hmm. I think that just because he uses testosterone and his strength is, is, is developing, is improved, then he uses higher weights and his, his lifting intensity is so high that perhaps his joints are uh, stressed out. Mm, yeah. I mean, if testosterone did all these horrible things to tendonitis, we'd know about it by now because people would be complaining about it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, testosterone, I mean, well... It can lubricate the joints, but it doesn't affect uh, ten tendons. But if you abuse testosterone, not on the TRT, if you abuse it, then the muscles develop, and then the tendons do not follow, and then the rupture comes. Mm. Yeah, it's actually, I just, I did an interview, you know who Akeem Williams is, of course. He, mm. uh, he got very, very strong at first, before he even got big. He was 190 pounds, and he could bench press 405 for three reps. His, his, his uh, physique looks so dense and thick, so yeah. like he's a power lifter, you know? Yeah. The craziest thing he told me was when he was only 185 or 90 pounds, he got hurt trying to press 160-pound dumbbells overhead. you imagine that? 190-pound guy doing that? Oh, he's wow. a man monster, you know? Yeah, but no regrets. Yeah. Last question is about Trembolone. Why is Tremblone so commonly associated with kidney harm? Because it elevates blood pressure, and blood pressure then causes focal segment and glomerular sclerosis. Mm. But I hear also that uh, Tren is, live, is, live, is kidney toxic, and this is actually seen in the urine that takes a brownish color, you know, mm. and it smells, you know, really heavy, the odor of the urine when you pee and you use Tremblone. But certainly, tremble and elevates blood pressure, and blood pressure is harmful to the, to the kidneys and the glomerulus, actually, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, are you seeing a lot more people having health problems because directly linked to Trembolone? Because this is my theory. is I think people don't realize how strong it is mil per milliliter. Like, I don't think anybody, anybody needs more than 400 milligrams, 500 it's the a classic. It's a classic dose, yes. Yeah, but so, there are people out there doing a gram, two grams of train a week because really? they're, yeah, because they're treating it just like testosterone. They hear, well, people do a gram or two grams of test, might as well just do a gram or two grams of train. So I'll tell you what, I have a patient who was a world champion in amateurs in Greece. Yeah. Yeah, very famous guy. He's actually the top 10 of all time in Greece. Come on. Uh, he was six two, six three, actually, at 240. Uh, and he confessed that he was on and off 20 years in a row, okay? And actually, he was using Trent at least for a decade, you know? I mean, his off-season was, he was very lean. Mm. I wouldn't say ripped, he was very lean during his off-season. Yeah. And uh, he developed initially creatinine 
and then it went up to two, and then up to, two, to three. His blood pressure also was 18, 19, the systolic. Mm. And now he's, he's stage two kidney failure. Oh my gosh. Wow. He's my patient on the GRT, but he has kidney failure, you know, and uh, this is a, this is a steady condition, of course, and we hope it doesn't get worse. Yeah. You know, uh, cause you know, Boston Lloyd, uh, he's only 28 years old. Yeah, I, I watched a silly video that he was laughing, you know, taking, of course I watched the video with you and Connor, you know, and, uh, he took it so responsible, you know, he's so young at 28. Imagine he's going to for dialysis, you know, three times a week for the rest of his life. This is fucking crazy. This is misery. I know, but I want to I want to look back because he thanked you on his Instagram for an article that you wrote with somebody. Me? Uh, I gotta, yeah, I got to find it. Sorry to keep you guys waiting. Was it but... muscular development? I don't think so. I don't think, I think so. Listen, listen. It was on blood pressure with a show with Carl Lenore. Carl Lenore, yes, yes. Yeah, Superhuman yes. Radio, yes. And that day I got 100 followers just in one day, you know. So, yes, it was the silent killer, the blood pressure. Mm. And actually, uh, blood pressure can give you uh, a stroke, okay, with systolic blood pressure, aneurysm, under a squat, of course. But it gradually, it may kill your blood vessels by making them sclerotic so atherosclerosis means deposit of cholesterol along with hardening of the vessels because of blood pressure and because of nicotine and smoking and then we have the rupture okay yeah and it's the silent kidney and then gradually degradates the filter of your kidneys which is the glomerulus you know yeah that's filtrates and and tears blood into urine you know right because he blamed he blamed his kidney failure mostly on this one like peptide or I don't I know what think it was. So it's multifactorial. All mm. these steroids elevate pleasure through aldosterone, especially trembolin, okay? Now, use the stimulants also. Uh, if you don't do ex uh, too much of cardio in order to relax your vessels, okay? Take extra sodium. And even in, in this, this, this peptide that he used, it's multifactorial. I wouldn't play just this, you know? Mm. All the bodybuilders elevate the thickening uh, left ventricle that elevates blood pressure. It's, it's a circle. It's a, it is like a chain reaction, you know? Yeah. You know, <laughs> until I started doing these shows with you and Dr. Thomas, I had no idea that high blood pressure could harm your kidneys. I had no idea. I just thought high blood pressure must be bad for your heart. I, you know, I didn't even know how the kidneys could be harmed. I hear people in kidney failure and I'm like... Yeah, it's the main regulator of your kidneys through the renin angiotensin system. Mm. Okay. Angiotensin is also vasopressin, which is the, the antidiuretic hormone. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, uh, the renin angiotensin system. Yes. So they regulate blood pressure. Yes. Kidneys. Yeah. So I guess, you know, the message we still need to get out to all the bodybuilders out there is to monitor your blood pressure. Because mm. if your blood pressure is high for a long time, it's going to destroy your kidneys and you won't even know it until it's too late. And also, you may do a squat and then during yeah. the eighth, ninth rep, it's over. You yeah. collapse. You, you know, and there you, 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 in the best, the best scenario, you live with the paralyzed your jaw like Kurt Douglas, you know? Uh, yeah. Because, I mean, the blood pressure cuff guys at home, I think they're like 20, 30 bucks. They're not, they're not expensive. You can check your own blood pressure every day. I mean, even actually, if you're more than that. I tell you that bodybuilders, because they have huge arms of 20 inches, they need cuffs to be large enough because if they use the, the casual uh, cuffs, you know, then they pseudo elevate the blood pressure. So. Make sure it's super, super extra large, you know, in order to interfere. Because if it's compressed too much, then it, it, it does not react like with the sedentary people, you know. Yeah. Well, the good thing is in the United States, we have so many obese people that every doctor's office has a cuff big enough for a big fat, fat arm that's like that big, even if it's 20, 20 inches fat. So most bodybuilders are in good shape. Yeah, we even, I've seen wheelchairs here for obese people that are like four feet wide, and that's just for one person. They're huge, heavy-duty wheelchairs for somebody that weighs like five, six, seven hundred pounds. Seven hundred pounds. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, we have a good show called "My Six Hundred Pound Life." You can check that out sometime. It's on TLC. It's all people. You have to be six hundred pounds or or over to be on the show. And they have a new person every week. Sometimes two or three people. Anyway, we'll so Ron, to, have you yeah. heard about the shows? When they're gonna start? Yeah, yeah, we have. Uh, so In May. The show? We're going to have three shows in May. We're going to have the Indy Pro on May 8th in Indianapolis, uh, New York Pro May 15th in Tampa, Florida, and then California Pro the 22nd. It says California. I don't know where it's really going to be. It might be 
Florida, who knows? But three shows in a row, and um, yeah, who would we? The New York show will take place in New York. No, Tampa, Tampa, Florida. Uh, yeah, uh, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> Just have everything in Florida this year. Just make it easy. Uh, the, the gyms are all over the states open with a mask. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I don't know too many that are... Yeah, I don't I think, think any, In LA, they have outdoors gyms in, in Venice, huh? Uh, yeah, there's an outdoor deck. I think even when you had to wear a mask, even when gyms were closed, a lot of places they could still do outdoor exercise classes. You know, if you want to go to some parking lot or a park, yeah. you do a... I don't know, aerobics or something. But, yeah, gyms are open with, with masks. Uh, you guys have to wear a mask in, in Athens, I assume, right? No, they're shut off. Oh, they're all shut down again? Oh, yeah, since November 1st. I and I think they were, they, they're going to take also March. Did they ever open up? Weren't they open for a little while? Yeah, you were posting. Well, they opened yet. up from June 15th and then November 1st. So four and a half months. Oh, well. Yeah, luckily, you really, you, you, you invested in a lot of equipment. Yeah. So that you know, you pay yes. it off. You're doing everything at home. I see squats, deadlifts, every everything you could do at a gym except, you know, different yeah, machines. Free weights. Yeah. Yeah. free weights are the best anyway. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, Doc, it's been a it's been a quick show. That's no problem. I got to go out and do a little more sh sh snow cleanup before I can go to the gym. So I appreciate it. You stay warm over there. Congratulations on 100 shows again. That is Thank that's you. a big deal. 101 now, huh? Yeah, 100 like like the Dalmatians, 101. Yeah, we're doing well. So uh, as far as guests, we'll see. We'll see if you want to have anyone else on the show. It's your show. Yeah. You do what you want. We'll see. I'll try to do my PR. <laughs> okay. But for now, guys, you can put your questions in the comments below, and we'll get to those the next time we do questions. So you don't have this opportunity very often to have an actual medical doctor who is also champion bodybuilder, walk the walk, talk the talk, can answer all your questions the right way, not just some dope at the gym. Like, hey, bro, what about trend? Yeah, don't do that. Ask, ask the real people who know. So... Dr. George, thank you so much for taking the time, sharing your knowledge, your expertise. Everybody head over to Amazon. Also check out his site. Is that site all in Greece, gtool.com? No, they have two chapters, the medical and the miscellaneous. There are almost 80 articles in English. Oh, well, there you go, guys. So if you want to check out a lot of the great articles, because yeah. Dr. writes for muscular development every month, but he has a lot of great articles on his own website there. G2 and actually from, from March... Uh, muscular development, my new series of uh, articles my, in my column, so training and, and supplementation and nutrition. Yeah, well, that's the next one. Cool. And, of course, on the website, you still you still contribute articles, too, so that's great. Check it out, guys. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Ask Dr. Testosterone, starring this man, Dr. George Suliados. We'll see you next time.